What if I told you that one of the most important types of stock charts is one that you have not heard of before? Welcome to Sectors Made Simple. My name is Jonathan Stav, and here we have over 200 hours of educational content and investment resources to give you the knowledge and tools you need to invest simpler. And today, I want to give you an introduction to point and figure. Point and figure is a type of stock chart that offers us an incredible amount of information in a way that no other chart does. So, with this, I want to give you the basics of what point and figure is, so let's go over what we'll cover in this video. In this video, we'll cover what point and figure actually is, how you can read a point and figure chart, how you can make a point and figure chart, and lastly, the benefits and drawbacks of point and figure compared to other types of stock charts that you might be familiar with, such as candlestick or line charts. Let's start off with the simplest question. What is point and figure? Point and figure is a type of stock chart that is unique to many other types of stock charts you might be familiar with. Types of stock charts such as candlestick or line charts are what are known as time series charts. They follow time, where in certain intervals, much like a clock ticking with seconds, measures a stock's price at every one of those intervals. This is really good that it gives us an idea of how a stock's price is changing with time, but it sometimes can be a little bit useless when a stock's price isn't changing over a long period of time, and really, that time doesn't matter to us. If what we're focused on are trends and changes in trends, point and figure is going to be our friend. Point and figure, instead of tracking time, tracks uptrends and downtrends, allowing us to follow these trends and understand where a trend starts and where it ends. This gives us some really unique ways of trying to find different levels of support and resistance that are possible with other types of charts but are made simple and visual with point and figure. But that's a story for another day. For right now, let's just focus on the basics and talk a little bit more about how we can actually read a point and figure chart. Now, I'll be honest here. One of the biggest challenges, and probably the reason that you haven't heard of point and figure before, is that it takes a little bit of knowledge to be able to read these charts. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through right now how to read a point and figure chart. The first thing that you're going to notice when you look at a point and figure chart is that it looks a little bit different than stock charts that you might be familiar with. The first thing you're going to notice is that we have a lot of columns of X's and O's that are put onto this really big grid. This grid is made up of a bunch of different boxes, where each box represents a range of prices from one price to another so that we can kind of group things into a little bit more of a manageable way. Then we have those columns of X's and O's. Columns of X's represent a uptrend or positive price direction, whereas columns of O's represent a downward trend or a negative price direction. Lastly, you might be seeing a few red numbers around the chart, or even A, B, and C. These refer to time. After all, we do need some understanding of time, so point and figure gives that to us with these numbers and letters, where each letter and number corresponds to a part of the calendar. 1 is January, 2 is February, all the way down to 9 being September. Then, because we kind of run out of numbers and 11 doesn't really ring that well, we go over to A for October, B for November, and C for December. Now that we understand what we're actually seeing on a point and figure chart, let's talk about how we go from a column of X's to a column of O's, or a column of O's to a column of X's. And to do that, we need to talk a little bit about how point and figure charts are actually made. If we think about other types of charts that we might be familiar with, line charts only need close prices, whereas candlestick need open, high, low, and close prices. Point and figure sits somewhere in the middle, where to make a point and figure chart, we need the close price, the high price, and the low price. Point and figure charts update themselves once a day, meaning the high, low, and close for the day are recorded, 
and any changes needed are made to the point and figure chart. In general, it's much easier to continue going in one direction than it is to change directions. To put this into a practical example, if we are in a column of X's, all we need is one new box on top to continue or add a new part to that column. But if we wanted to flip into O's, we would need at least three boxes downward in order for us to be able to start a new column of O's. Additionally, when we are going up in a column of X's, to enter a new box, the price just needs to go to or above the price that is listed in that box. So if we have a box that says $70, all the price has to do to be in that box is be at $70 or up to $71, which is the end of that box. However, if we are in a column of O's and the price is going down, we would need to have the number be that price or lower in order to fill in that box. So that same box that says 70 in order for us to fill in that box with an O would need to be $70 or less. With that, we're ready to start drawing some of our columns. If we're in a column of X's, in order for us to add a new X, we just need to go into the box above it. Also, we can go even further, so if the price goes up by more than one box, we can still add more and more boxes onto that same column, even in the same day. However, for us to reverse from X's to O's, we would need that three box reversal in the opposite direction. If we're in a column of O's, we can add on, just like we did for X's, new O's to the bottom as the price goes down. And for us to go from O's to X's, we would need a reversal of three boxes once again. The last little thing for us to mention is that if the high and low are a little bit funky and we would technically add a new X but also flip into a column of O's, the chart is only going to do one thing add new boxes to the current column, or start a new column in the opposite direction, whatever has happened the most recently. If all of that is a little overwhelming, don't worry. Very rarely, if ever, will you need to make a point and figure chart. So let's just focus on the things that you should be aware of if you want to use point and figure charts. Columns of X's are positive price trends, Columns of O's are negative price trends. It's much easier to keep going in the same direction than it is to throw it in reverse and start going the other way. Before we get into the benefits and drawbacks of point and figure compared to other types of charts, I feel like now is a time to mention the benefits of a like and a subscription to our YouTube channel. They are entirely free on your part, and they really do go a pretty far way to helping the algorithm understand what our videos are about, and to give us an indication of what types of videos you're enjoying and finding interesting so that we can focus on that more in the future. It's a great investment in your financial education and our future content for you. With that said, let's take a look at the pros and cons of point and figure. Let's start off with the pros of point and figure. The first and most obvious benefit is that because point and figure is not time series, it cuts out periods of basically no price movement and instead lets us focus on price trends, which lets us look at a larger period of time but still have a lot of significance in terms of all the different pieces of information the chart offers us. The next benefit is that point and figure is very clear with showing where price trends start and end. This allows us to create support and resistance barriers to understand where a price makes it to before reversing and going the opposite direction. These barriers can provide us some very unique tools for doing something called technical analysis or using price to determine buy and sell signals. These support and resistance barriers and using them for technical analysis is something we will cover in a future video. And once that video is published, you'll be able to find a link to it up in the top right of this video. The last benefit kind of ties in a little bit to the previous one in that because point and figure makes technical analysis easier, it opens up a new way for us to create trading strategies and find buying opportunities for different securities. 
That now brings us to the cons or the drawbacks of point and figure. The first is the fact that point and figure is not time series. Its biggest benefit is also its biggest drawback because it can be a little bit tricky to understand exactly how long it took for a certain price trend to happen. Yes, we do get some information to know what month something happened in, but if we're looking at a column of 10 X's that took place in one month, we don't know if it was five X's one day, nothing happened for two weeks, and then five X's again, if it was one X per day for 10 days, or if it happened all in one day. The next drawback is connected to the previous, which is that because we don't understand exactly how long each box is there, we don't understand how long a price has been stuck at a specific box. All we know is that it is in that box and has been in that box. For how long? We're not exactly sure. The last drawback is that because point and figure is not time series, it makes certain technical analysis indicators a little bit more tricky or just straight up impossible to calculate. Things like simple moving averages, Bollinger bands, and more become a little bit tough to use or to calculate because we lose that time series element that many of them rely on. We've covered a lot of information in today's video, so let's quickly review everything that we've learned about today. Point and figure is a type of stock chart that follows price trends instead of time. These trends are tracked on a graph that use columns of X's to show positive price trends and O's to show negative price trends. It is easier to continue in the current trend than it is to flip into the opposite trend. And lastly, understanding where trends start and end give us a very valuable way of creating trends and barriers to be able to do all sorts of technical analysis and trading strategies off of them. Now that you know the basics of point and figure, you're ready to start using point and figure charts. We'll cover this in more detail in future classes, including different ways that point and figure charts can be used, how to identify point and figure buy and sell signals, and how point and figure can give us some very unique ways of gauging a stock's performance and relative performance to other securities. Thank you for making it this far into the video. If you enjoyed this content, I'd like to recommend that you take a look at our website, sectorsmadesimple.com. There, you can create a free account and gain access to our Learn site, which offers over 100 hours of free webinar content, organized in playlists and categorized to help you understand and learn more about the stock market, investments, the economy, and more. But that's all the time we have for today. Thank you all so much for joining us here. It was a pleasure to help make investing simpler for you, me, and everyone. Take care.